<laughs> now there are women just on the street that are far worse than any porn star from the 70s, 80s, and the 90s. They're just oh, out yeah. there. You go to Nashville, bachelorette parties, they're on the street, just hollering, you know, just hooting and hollering. <laughs> and it's always one that's like, you got like a bachelorette. Well, you know what? I should have Nicole talk about this. <laughs> Am I wrong that when you have a bachelorette party, you tell me if I'm wrong. Here's what here's the way I see it with bachelorette parties. You got the girl getting married. You've got maybe uh, a couple of relatives that are with her that are wholesome, right? And they're just happy to be out of the house. They might have kids. Then you got the friends that are ready to get out of town. But one of those friends is definitely a whore. And the other one just got out of a just went through a breakup. So she's looking. And they're all a bad influence for the bride. Am I wrong? You are wrong, because there ain't nobody wholesome at a bachelorette party. <laughs> no no woman is wholesome. So the only thing I got wrong were the two wholesome part, yeah. girls of it. I got married. I'll, I'll be 39 this year. I got married when I was 21. I would like just turned 21. It only lasted like six months. But I had a bachelorette party. And it was like me and a bunch of girlfriends and they booked out this like tavern in town and we're like having dinner and stuff and then here comes this big ass dude walking in i don't know what it is about male strippers like why guys get like hooter girls that are like put together but for women like we get strippers that somehow come out in like a police hat but it's like a child's police hat <laughs> i don't know what the how that works out but this dude comes out with clothes that don't fit him he's just like all muscle and next thing i know his dick is hitting me in the forehead and every girl that i was with like we just all inhibition is out the door we're all drunk the guy's like we're all pouring baby oil on him sticking <laughs> money on this man <laughs> We're all Throwing animals. Dick candy all over the place. All the animals, dick candy. Right? The dick, yeah. And when you see him with the dick straws and walking around like the yeah. streets drinking, I, I have a I have a theory. If if you have a bachelor party, now bachelor parties are fine. Like get the girl, get together with the girls, go to a city, go to the spa, whatever. But if you have a bachelor party that ends up in alcohol and strip clubs and drugs, that marriage never works ever because the nope. night always comes up the girl or the guy will wait like eight months but like so on your bachelor party you didn't you didn't pick up your phone that what was going on and it just fought like because they go for it girls and guys mm -hmm. you know like i have a buddy who's a stripper been a stripper for 20 something years and we we were talking about it one time he goes i get the most aggressive girls are the ones that are bachelor about to get married the next day and he goes i'm sh you know i'm ashamed of it but I've had so much sex with girls. That I knew when I woke up the next morning, we're getting ready for their wedding. <laughs> and I'm just like, there's no way these marriages last. And same thing for guys. If you got to go to a strip, my whole life was a bachelor party before I got married. So it's kind of like, I didn't need it and I didn't want it. But the guys that go, I was like, I want to get laid one more time. It's like, it's like, the people that say, I'm going to start my diet tomorrow, I swear. Yeah. It never works out. It's always going to fail. Oh. Dude, but it's even more, like you expect it with the guys. Like when now, because now the, uh, there's a whole big thing now. It's over the last few years, whether it's on TikTok or Instagram or on YouTube, these uh, these these influencers that have channels where they go on the street and they just interview people. And they're mostly inebriated especially if you go to Miami, they do it in Miami, they do mm -hmm. it in Nashville. Um, and that's that uh, perfect example is the hawk to a girl. What, okay, so I've seen this, but what what is the hawk to a? All right, let's take a look. We'll, we're gonna watch it real quick. What's one move in bed that makes a man go crazy every time? Oh, you, you gotta give him that hawk to and spit on that thing, you get me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't get you. I think you got to uh, demonstrate. Hawk to spit no, like, on it. Spit on it. <laughs> What's your thoughts on that? She's just, she's just being real, y'all. <laughs> she, she's she, being she's real. right. Listen, we love that. As guys, the dirtier, the better for the guys. But we don't like to see it on the street like that. Like, I don't want to see the, uh, like, first of all. Her boyfriend. Keep it in the sheets, not the streets. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but they, as as uh, as it said, they all belong to the streets. 
<laughs> you can't you get them out of it. <laughs> so think about how many girls have seen that and go, oh, that's what my guy wants. And they go to bed next time and they, they try it for the first time. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like sitting there going like, what the fuck is going on? Don't you want the hawk to it? I would lose it. I would just be done. And I'm bed. into it. <laughs> church girls. That's who's doing that. I'm ready for that. I'm re- If they're a church girl, even fucking better. <laughs> the illusion was destroyed right there. You're like, yeah. okay. Yeah. She can't act like a good girl around anybody anymore. No. It's like, we know your deal, hawk to mm-hmm. it. Well, in, in fact, that's a good point. She now, no matter where she goes, you can't take her seriously of being a good girl. And well, that, she'll lean into, well, I was drunk, whatever. You know. But that's yeah. her move now. Imagine being a guy and you hook up with her and you're like, I'm ready for the hot tour. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't do it. You're like, what do you, it's like, where's your greatest hit? That's, that was the number one song. The hot tour. Like, it's like going to Bon yeah. Jolly concert and no <laughs> living on a prayer. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I, feel, I feel ripped off. <laughs> Imagine that. That would be if you met Hawk Tua and you got back to the room and you're like, I know what I'm in for. And she doesn't do it. You're like, you didn't play your hit. And you're thinking she's saving it for the end. You're doing yeah. everything. Yeah. You get there. You're making out. You're, you're, you're getting down to all the clothes are off. You're a little flirting. You're doing this. Right. All kinds of things going on. And she doesn't do it. No Hawk Tua. No Hawk Tua. Then she says, I'll be right back. I can use the restroom. You're like, all right. Here we go, hot tour time. It's coming out, right? It's the it's the encore. <laughs> Mom, she passes right the fuck out. You're like no greatest hit for me. <laughs> yeah, no. she she's got she's like typecast now. Was it called when the actors can only play one role? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, she's typecast. She she's she's the hot tour girl. She, right. But poor Pookie. But do you want it right at the front, or do you want it? Do you want to wait for the encore? Uh, see, I think you got to get to me. Dude, hit me with living on a prayer. Let me yeah. have it. I came here for this. <laughs> well, it's like Limp, no. Limp Biscuit will open their set with break stuff. Yeah. And close their set with break stuff. Because they know that's what people want to hear the most is that mm-hmm. song. And they they got it. Most bands, like if Bon Jovi came out with living on a prayer and close it, I'd be super happy. I'd be like, yeah. I got to hear them play it twice. That's the best song. Yeah, bookend that shit. Yeah. yeah Hawk to a Spit sh- on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Octua. It, even, Octua. Even, even though in a year from now, this will be like just a relegated moment, meme moment in time. That that was pretty comical for a minute with the memes and stuff. But yeah. but if you're Octua girl and you're listening to this, that's your hit. You got to play right your there. hit. Octua, you have to play your hit song if you get in bed with anybody. If you leave them without the Octua and spit on that thing, you got to get the money back. You know, no more concerts for me. Here's the opportunity of a lifetime that I don't, I don't think anybody notices right now. If there's a punk rock band out there that's listening to this, change your name to Hawk Tua, be the first to do it, and your career immediately is going to get... Yeah. So, you won't be huge, but you're going to get noticed. Flash in the pan. That right there is a flash in the pan deal. Yeah, but the name Hawk Tua is so... Yeah. It's like Limp Biscuit used to be a kind of a f- saying back in the day for for some yeah. some sort of thing but limp biscuit hawk tua you know what limp biscuit is it's when a guy the stand band. Ar- <laughs> put a biscuit in the middle and the guy stand around and do a circle jerk and the last guy who comes has to eat the biscuit oh, oh my jesus God. christ come on dude oh my i God. didn't make it up i didn't Are make you it up serious? and fred durst made his band that what that's Everything I've heard since that band has come out, that's, that's what that name is. gay as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Limp Biscuit. That's yeah. the, that's. So maybe somebody came up with that story after. I don't know, but that's what I heard early on. Was it was like you know you hear like the the, the sex stories where they're like the upper decker and the whatever, and the Limp Biscuit was like that's the story. Is guys would jerk and whoever came last. Oh had to eat my the god! And the chocolate covered starfish. <laughs> Hot dogs water, <laughs> yeah. which, is, which is like penis water. So it's, oh my it's all god! Right. I think we got to look into Fred Durst's uh, background here. He is from Gastonia. Well, that's true. <laughs> you know, he used to work at a skateboard shop. I bought I bought a skateboard deck from that guy. He, a place yeah. called Ollie's right behind Carowinds, and he was he was a good skateboarder, really good skateboarder.